voltage and we are given this is R1 as the input this is our input voltage this is the base current because we, this is the base this is a collector this is our emitter and this is our collector current of course so we have the circuit as required we're supposed to have the complete valves uh, the valves are provided information from the information we know that this is this valve is equals to 10 volts and the, the voltage across this so here that's why we have the this voltage here is VCE equals to 5 volts the voltage across that junction here and this voltage here we are told to negate so it's supposed to be VBE we are told this is approximately to 0 so very small values and we are told to negate that so we are given the input voltage here as 5 volts so the base current and the collector current are given. So base current IB is given as 0 0.2 milliampere, which is 0 0.2 times 10 negative 3 ampere. And we have the collector current equals to 10 milliampere, which is equals to 10 times 10 negative 3. This gives us 1 times 10 negative 2 ampere. So part A of this question, we are looking for the values of R1 and R2. And you can see from this circuit, where do you find R1? So R1 is found in the input circuit, and R2 is found in the output circuit. So you are supposed to consider the, the circuit which involves the input and output. So if you remember, uh, when you are applying the Kirchhoff's, if you apply the Kirchhoff's in this loop, to one and two for the input. From the input you have the voltage which is given as the input voltage. This input voltage equal to the the voltage across R1 which is I1 uh, base current times R1 plus the voltage across the junction that's VE so it's VBE. This is the the input circuit and give us the equation which governs the input circuit. If you know the input voltage and we have the base current, you can find the other one. So here we are told that this VBE is zero. So from here you can see, since the base emitter voltage is zero, so you are left with B, VI equals to base current times R1. From where you can find R1 as VI of our base current. So our input voltage is 5 divided by the base current is 0 0.2 times 10 negative 3 is the same as 5 over 2 times 10 negative 4. And then there, so we have the input, that's R1, the, volt, the re resistance of the input, uh, of course the input is given by, is 5 divided by 2, 2.5 this will be times 10 to the power 4, which gives us 2, 5, 0, 0. So we have four zeros, which means we can still have three. So this is the resistance of the input across the input circuits, which is given the name R1. But B, okay, R2, you can find R2 from the output circuit. From this circuit, we have the VCC equals to the voltage across this R1, R2 I mean this is uh, I, this is the collector current times R2, plus the voltage across this junction as V, VCE. Our VCC is 10, our IC is given, 1 times 10 negative 2, we have R2, which we are looking for, we don't have, plus our VCE, is given as 5. So you have 10 minus 5, which gives us 5, which is a 1 times 10 negative 2 R2. And from there, you can find the values of R2 as 
5 divided by 1 times 10 out of 2 which give us 5 0 0 ohms so that's the values of R1 and R2 respectively according to the equation so this is what we discussed in the first part of this electronics and uh, you, we saw how to find from that these equations from there you can find the current gain voltage gain and the power gain now let's see part B <coughs> part B says so, uh, uh, if by changing the values of R1 it's uh, corresponding VCE changes and adjusted to 2.5 what will be the value of I, IC it means here the values of R2 is not changed it means as 500 ohms the value of the R which is changed is R1 by changing that and uh, we are told VCE now changes to uh, 2.5 in other words the supply voltage remains the same as 10 and what will be now the collector current so from here you can see we are talking about the output circuit where you have the supply voltage equals to IC R2 plus VCE as we derived from here so you have uh, this will be 10 mm, IC is not given but R2 is the same as 500 plus VCE is now adjusted to 2.5 10 minus 2.5 I think you can, you can know that is 7.5 which equals to 500 times the IC now this gives us the collector current after changing the values of R1 which gives us 7.5 of 500 using your calculator so I have 9 here you can find the value of IC 7.5 divided by uh, 500 gives us 0 0.015 ampere so that value equals to is almost 15 milli ampere so you see 15 times 10 negative 3 times 10 negative 3 that's millimeter so that's how you can find the value of uh, so that's what we did in the first part of this topic now in our today's discussion we're going to discuss about the the, uh, the subtopic known as transistor as a switch but before we talk about the switch you're supposed to discuss about the saturations and the cutoff state of a transistor and after we shall see now how do you use transistor in automatic switches and the alarm system so that's our, our today's presentation so we want to discuss about the uh, saturation and the cutoff state of a transistor finally we shall see now where can we use this concept in application of transistor in the automatic switches and the alarm system so that's our today's discussion Now, to talk about the saturation and the cutoff state of a transistor, let's consider the previous circuit that we drew. This was the, our circuit. We had this NPN. Can you use NPN or PNP? And maybe this is our resistor, R, L. This is our input, of course we have the voltage applied here, but you know the, vo the output is supposed to be collected ac across the collector and the emitter. So this, that's where you find the output. So this is our C, this is our base, this is our emitter, and let's consider that we are talking about the NPN transistor. So that here we have the base, so the collector current produced by base. And then we have the emitter current 
Okay, this, you remember, this is a common emit arrangement. And at this voltage here, if you remember, this is the voltage across the VCE. Of course, it's going to be taken from here. That's where we have the output. This is the voltage across the junction, which is given them VBE. Now, if you remember, when we talk of a transistor, we have different types of transistor. We have silicon and germanium transistor. Silicon, the base emitter, the, the voltage across the base emitter, that's where we should distinguish the two types of transistor. For silicon, it may be 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 for silicon, but for germanium, it's supposed to be 0 0.3. 0 0.3 0 0.4. So this is the type of transistor that you normally use. I said we can use NPN or PNP, or sometimes you normally use the, the transistor which, which are utilized by the materials made from silicon and the germanium. We prefer silicon, if, if you remember in the class, and we, we know the reason why we normally use silicon transistor instead of germanium. So for silicon, first we know for silicon. For this, bed, the base, is 0 0.6, it varies 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. So that voltage across there, uh, it varies from there. It, it will be given depending on the nature of the question now. So, in other words, in order to produce the current here, if you remember, when you talk about the diodes, because this is transistor is made from these uh, young PN junctions. Now, if you remember for a diode, it's, it's, when you have a diode, if you remember when you talk of PN, PN, PN junction, that was the type of junction we, we, we formed. You can have a forward or reverse. And we say that the, in order for the current to, to flow in the forward, they must, you have to supply some of the voltage. Now that voltage should overcome. We have the voltage which has been created there, barrier, the voltage barrier, which now when you overcome that barrier, the current will flow. So even for a transistor, it means that for the input circuit, for the input circuit, we have input, we have this I. The input voltage is given by IB, uh, R input plus VBE. That is one. And remember, that current corrector is given by this times the beta. <coughs> Like that, in order to, for the base current to flow here, we must overcome this. Sometimes here, this VBE, is if it's open 7, so the applied voltage should be greater than that voltage. Otherwise, we don't have the current. So the current will be uh, established here from this question. You can see from 1, so the current, base current, will be given by VI minus VBE over R. That's the input resistance. So the one which determines the current flow is the difference between the input voltage and the VBE. So if the VBE is less than that, no way you can have the current. So in order for the base current to flow, to flow in the circuit, so the applied voltage, the input voltage should be greater than this value. This is the condition number one. The input voltage should be greater than that. So now let's see here, when it happens when the input is less than less than uh, VBE. We talk about the this more. What happened? This is case number one. What happened when the input voltage is very small? So that is less than that the VBE. It means that we don't have the current here. The current, the base current equals to zero. And then, if this is zero, we know automatically from this formula that uh, the collector current is also zero. If that is the case, if you remember from the output circuit, this was the input. So if you consider the output circuit, we have VCC equals to IC R L plus VCE. So let's see now the implication of that. The implication of this is that when the input is very low, so that it cannot produce any base current, automatically the collector current will be zero. The voltage here, the current across will be zero. 
and if this is zero, the whole of this will be zero. As a result, the VCE, which now take as the output here, equals to maximum, equals to the supply voltage. That means the VCE, which you talk about the output, is, is equal, is approaching, is approaching the supply voltage. We say this is the maximum voltage. What do you mean by here? So if we don't have base current, automatically we don't have the we don't have the collector current. For this case now the transistor is behaving as a in the uh, open state. It's open switch as open. Mm -hmm. So it is a, in the model. Remember we had two types. We have saturation and the cutoff. So it, this is the condition of the cutoff state. The cutoff. Cutoff means the transistor is behaving as an open switch, open switch, and the fact that most of the voltage will be closing, uh, will be dropping across the transistor, you can see, and this transistor will be, be behave as it has very large resistance. Very large resistance means no current flows through it. So this is the case of the cutoff, cutoff state. So remember, cutoff state of a transistor, the VCE equals the maximum power supply. That's one condition. Part B, let's go to the uh, second part of it. What happens now? The second case here, what happens? When VI increases, increases, let's talk about increases. It, if it increases, it means that uh, from this question here, the, the base current will be produced. So IB is produced. Hence, I, IC flows. And uh, from the output circuit, we have VCC equals to IC RL plus VCE. So you can see now here, since the, this current flows, now the current starts increasing, it increases. When the current increases, it means that the voltage across this also increases. If this increases, so the voltage would give it the output voltage equals to VCC minus ICRL. What happens? If this voltage increases, it means that the VCE reduces. Reduces. It may be some of the, the current may be flows. Small current may be produced in the base. It produces the base current. That means it makes the transistor to behave. It means the current may be flowing through the transistor, but the, the, what? the VCE is moderate. It's moderate. So in that means now, that's the case where this, the, the, the input voltage increases. If it reaches a point where this increase, increase these values more than that, further increase of that, what happens? When you increase this voltage, we will know from the principal transistor. If you remember in our discussion, we talk about transistor can be used as amplifier. There's a region where the transistor it has the operating point. Not all the inputs will be producing the the, out, the output. So we have the certain point where the transistor is operating as an amplifier. So we have the, the operating point of a transistor. So here we have the active regions where the transistor will be acting. So here from this concept, you can see that's where the area where the transistor will be uh, will be flowing the current flows. Now where we suppose to have the point where it reaches now is not uh, behaving as a, an active transistor. For example, when this increases, when the voltage increases, further increase of the input voltage. If the voltage increases, reach a point now. Let's see case number three. Further increases of the input voltage. It means now the base current also increases, and this makes the collector current also to increase. When this increases, it reaches a point now from the the output. We have VCC equals to IC RL plus VCE. Let's find this now. What happened? VCE equals to the VCC minus ICRL. This is our output equation. And we said from the beginning, 
when the input starts increasing, so it produces a current, moderate current, which makes the transistor to, to behave now. The current through the transistor will flow. So we have the output. This was the given as the, the output will be produced here. So we have the small voltage range. We remember, when you talk of a transistor, the output producing cannot be greater than the supply voltage. Is a limit where the output can be produced. So here, when the input voltage increases, it makes the, this current to increases. It increases, and it makes also these values to increase. When this value increases, it has a limit. It reaches a point where this now voltage is equal. We said the output will never be greater than that. So there's a point where this voltage will be equal to the supply voltage. So when that happens, it is when this current has been increased. So it's reached a point where this voltage are uh, equal. The VCC and IC, the voltage across the collector resistor, so the, the, uh, the, resist, the old resistor will be approaching each other. As a result, the VCE is approaching zero. It's approaching zero. What do you mean by that? That is where you have the maximum current. This is the maximum current has been produced. So this maximum current, I see, is maximum, is maximum, and uh, one local maximum, it means even if we increase the input voltage, the current also increases, that values will never increase. It's like uh, example when you are at home, when you have some sugar in a cup, when there's a point where increasing some sugar, we have the condition where th those sugars which are to be added, they will never dissolve. So the current, when it is a maximum, we say it is said to be saturated. So there is saturation. Increasing the input will never increase the maximum, the current. So this is the saturation of a transistor. So the transistor is said to be in a saturated state. At saturation state, the VCE is equal to zero, and this current equals to the maximum. Now, if you are told to find the maximum current, how do you find it? The maximum current is found from here, from this voltage. We then say that this is zero when VCE, VC, VCC equals to the IC times the RL. So can you find the maximum current here from the supply voltage of RL? So this is the formula used to find the maximum, maximum current. So here, we can see we have the condition where trans transistor can be acting as, we can be found in a saturated state, or it can be found in the cutoff state. For this case now, this is zero, it means the transistor is behaving as if it has a very low resistance. In the previous, when we have cutoff states, the VCE is maximum, which shows that the transistor is behaving as if it's so like a very large resistance. For this case now, you can see we have three states of a transistor. We have the cutoff state, when the input is very low, and then we have somewhere the region where the transistor can be active, so it makes some sort of application. And we have the, some, the this linearity, linear. This, the current will be produced, will be linear to that. And then we have the other state, the region where the transistor is supposed to be in a saturated state. So when you are given those kind of conditions, some of these conditions are used to make use of amplification as, as a, others as a switch. Now let's see example number three. We said this is a continuation of the first part of our, 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 our topic. Example number three, if you remember in the, the first part of this topic, we, we did two examples. Example number three is design a transistor circuit using a light dependent resistor and other components to switch on a light when it gets dark. This is a competence question. So this is not a, a direct question. When you talk to design a, a, a transistor circuit, that means we make use of this transistor. When it gets dark, the, this, uh, the lights will be switching on automatically. This automatic switch, as I said. Okay, now to start solving this question, first you should know what do you mean by light dependent resistor? It's LDR, right? Dependent resistor. These are the type of resistor whose uh, resistance depends the amount of 
light intensity falling on it. The light intensity falling of that on this resistor will make the resistance to change. If you remember, the symbol for this resistor, if you remember you did in your class, that was the symbol for that is, and then you, you see. That means the resistance will be changing depending on the amount of light falling on it. And the resistance is inversely proportional to the intensity of light. If you remember that the principle that we did in the in the PM junction, we talked about the, uh, the other components. It means that resistance we depends on the light falling on it. Here in the dark, in the dark, when you ha have low intensity, resistance is very high automatically in terms of mega, 10 power 6 and so on. In the daylight, the intensity of light is very high, it has very low resistance. So knowing this now, and we are supposed to use this component to design a circuit and then from use other components. So I remember I told you before that we normally use the common emitter transistor. So step number one, you should have let this R, R, the R, be the light, light independent resistor. And then you're supposed to have another, let's um, use it as R1. And then R2, we have supposed to have a fixed resistor. And then you're supposed to have the lamp, and as the, as the, as, uh, as, uh, as what? are supposed to be replacing the output the resistor and then you're supposed to have maybe so you're supposed to have the common emitter transistor in common emitter is a transistor just talk of a transistor in the npn transistor can you use npn transistor or npn so i'm going to prefer using that so step number one you draw the circuit this is our circuit here This is our normal RN. This is our this is our collector here, our base emitter, and this is the base current, and uh, this is our collector current. So that's where you connect maybe the lamp. Lamp. The lamp must be connected here. That means this is the output, so it can be switched on. So here, where do you connect those two components now? So we have a circuit should be drawn. Remember for stabilizing the common emitter transistor, if you remember, we had a certain component here which should be incorporated here and the other. So that's where we have, this is the input resistance. So this is our input uh, remember, this is our input voltage it's supposed to be applied here. Now, where do you connect the, the this light dependent resistor? Let's try to check if it's supposed to be here at the base. So here, this is our this is our light dependent resistor L R D R L D R, and the, that's where you fix. We think this is our R1, this is our R2. So the supply voltage, some will be coming here, they can produce the can produce the base current. So the one which will determine the base current is the voltage across here. So now let's see. This is what we call about the VBE of VCE here. And there's we have the VBE. This is our supply voltage, which is given. Now the circuit is drawn. Let's check whether this circuit drawn will make the light to be on when the, it gets dark or during the daytime. So to see how it works, you can see this arrangement. This is this forms the potential divider. So that some of the voltage will be passing here from the supply voltage. Some of the voltage will be applied here. Let's talk about the 
how do you find the voltage across one and two from here? And how, which one will be having the greater share of the voltage? For example, let's con uh, consider the circuit of this type. If you remember, if you had a circuit of, uh, this is 24 volts, and it is now, this is R1, simple, and this is R1 here is 2, and this R2 here is 10 ohms. Mm -hmm. So we have this, to, to know the meaning of the potential divide. So some of the voltage will be produced here. How much has been produced here? because of this. Let's take this V1 and this is V2. From the concept of potential divide, we know that V1 equals to the, the voltage across R1. This is R1 over the total resistance, which is R1 plus R2 times total voltage, which is 24, supply. So if you check, this is the 2 over 12 times 24. This is 4 volts. So the remaining voltage, which is given by this R2 over total, which is now R2 is 10 over 12 times 24, this gives 220. So you can see the value of resistance of the voltage, the high voltage depending the, 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 the resistance. You can see this 20 voltage has been supplied because of the value of the resistance is high. So the share that we get depends on the amount of resistance we have. A small share we produce a small, a small resistance we produce a small share of the voltage. So the same principle applied here. Since the resistance, this is the light dependent resistor. When the darkness falls, as I said before, the resistance of this of this semiconductor material is tending to increase. When it increases, it means that most of the voltage from the supply will be found here. This voltage will be sufficient to make, to produce the base current. And remember we said, a current will be produced where this will have a space, a sufficient voltage, which will be overcoming that voltage across the junction. So these ones, the voltage across here will be sufficient to produce the base current. As a result, the current across this now, the, we draw this is our, collector current will be flowing through the circuit, and as a result, the lamps will be on. In other words, if you want to make this switch, to, to switch on the lights during the daytime, you're supposed to interchange the values, the, the, this resistor. When this is at the top, it means when it gets now, we shall see now, during the daytime, it will be having a very low resistance, and most of the resistance will be found at the bottom. So that's how you can make use of a trans circuit transistor to design a switch. That switch will be, it's automatic switches. When the darkness falls, the light will be on automatic. I think I've enjoyed this is where the application of a transistor can be used. And we know the principle that normally using the concept that the voltage, uh, the voltage that will be uh, applied here will be sufficient to produce the current, and that current will make the output to flow, output current, as a result, any component will be placed here can be operated. Let's example number four. Example number four now. Uh, I think you're making a follow-up on this, on this transistor as a switch. Let's example number four on this part of a transistor as a switch. We are given a circuit diagram. As you can see, is this the NPN transistor with the input voltage applied, the supply voltage given, and the collector current. This is in the common, common, common emitter, if you remember. Now, we are looking for the, from this information that we're given from the circuit, the information says that in the above n pin transistor that we have seen, the input voltage can be varied from 0 to 5. To 5. The input changing from 0 to 5. That 5 is the supply voltage. Such that the current gain is given. So the current gain here, the current gain of a transistor is given as 250 and the input resistance as the 100k kilo ohms. This is 100 times 10 power 3 ohms. And then we are given uh, our output resistance, all resistance is 1k ohms. It's 1 times 10 power 3 ohms. And the supply voltage is given as the 5. Mm -hmm. That's the information. No. So the question is not ending there. It's that's the information you have. 
The question says, if the transistor is saturated, we know when transistor is saturated, we know that the VCE equals to zero. We are given from the information. The BBE equals to 0 0.7. We are required to find what? We are required to find the minimum base current for which the transistor will reach saturation. The minimum, the minimum base current. So from here, we have the, the all these informations are given. We have given the this resistance, this uh, input is given, and the, the input now is varying from zero to five. We are looking for these values when the transistor reach saturation. A. Find the base current when the transistor which is the saturation. We are told to find the minimum base current. How do we find that? We know when the transistor is saturated, the first thing to find is the current, the collector current. From the information that we have, the at the saturation we said VC is zero, then what? VCC equals to the, most of the voltage across the resistance will be equal to the supply voltage. So you can find this is the maximum collector current given by VCC of RL. Step number one, if you want to find the base current, the minimum base current, you should know the value of the current at which the transistor starts saturation. So it starts when the VCC is given, so our VCC is five, and uh, our load resistance here, which is now, which is now one times ten power three, you get five times ten negative three, which is five milliampere. This is our collector current. But the question is asking: when this, this is the, con the current at which the, sta the transistor starts sat saturation. So let's find the corresponding values of the base current. So how do you find it? Which is the question now? From from the formula, we know that IC equals to, we talk of the current gain, that's from this one, current gain is given, so can you find the base current? The base current equals to a current gain, base current equals to this collector of the beta. That's what can you can find, you can make a substitution. If you substitute the value of IC, which is given as 5 times 10 negative 3 over the current gain, which is 250. In your calculator, you can find what is the current, the base current. This is the minimum base current at which the transistor will be saturation. So let's find 5 e power negative 5, negative 3, divided by 250. You get 2. It is 2 times 10 negative 5 ampere. So the base current equals 2 times 10 negative 5 ampere. If you divide correctly, you get that value. So you have the corresponding value of the base current. So this is the minimum base current at which a transistor will start to saturate. But B, the B of this question is determine the input voltage when the transistor is switched on. And remember, when you talk of the, the transistor is switched on, it's supposed to be at this kind of a saturation. That's where it's switched on. In the in the cutoff, the transistor is supposed to switch off. Remember, because the IC is zero. So we have, we normally use cutoff state as transistor supposed to be switched on, off, and saturation, that's why the transistor now is on. So from there, we are supposed to find now, the, from this information, we are looking for the corresponding, this input voltage. So you know from the input voltage equals to uh, base current times the RB plus VBE. We know our VBE for this silicon transistor is given as 0.7 volts, and we know the base current now. We have we found that base current as 2 times 10 negative 5 ohm ampere. 
and the virus of RB, the virus of RB was given as from the from the question the RB was given as 100, 100 times 10 power power 3 ohms. So you are supposed to find VI. This equals to 2 times 10 power negative 5 times the RB is the same as 1 times 10 power 5 if you combine this power plus 0 0.7 volts. So here, these powers will cancel out. This positive and negative will cancel out. So you have the remain is 2 plus 0 0.7. This is 2.7 volts. So this is what? This is the input voltage where the transistor is switch it on 2.7 so the values we are looking for part A you are looking for the base, base, base current for which the transistor will be saturated to reach saturation and the part B you are looking for the input voltage when the transistor is switched on now sometimes from this information as I said before we have three states of a transistor you are supposed to explain now from this part C using the answers in A and B Explain when will the transistor be switched on or off. So from here, you can see the values we got. The input voltage varies from 0 to 5 volts. This is where the maximum supply voltage is. We never reach, we never go beyond that. And we have seen that the minimum, the, uh, when, when the, the VBE was 0 0.7, so from 0 to 0 0.7 volts. So this value we got here, this is the, this is the, the value, the minimum, the voltage at which the transistor now will start to be, uh, start to be a saturation to be switched on. So it means that from 0 to 0 0.7, remember, if the voltage is less than 0 0.7, that means that there's no way you can have the base current. So this is the condition where the transistor is such to be off. And when the voltage is from 0 here to 2.7, between that 2.7, this is the when the condition of the transistor is supposed to be in active, active state. And then, when the, the voltage is from 2.7 now here, to the maximum, that's where the transistor is supposed to be at saturation. So, this is it, on, on, off. According to the question, the answer is, the transistor is supposed to be on, from 2.7 to 5 volt, when the input voltage is from 2.7 to 5, and the transistor is supposed to be off from 0 to 2.7, but transistor is supposed to be in active region when it's from there. So remember, you can sketch, if you remember, you, you sketch this graph of the outputs and the uh, in, this was the out input against output. We found as this was the voltage was flowing like that. It reached a point where, so from here, Somewhere here, somewhere here. So, this is a region where the output voltage reaches the maximum. Remember, this is the, the equals to the what? Equal to the supply voltage. That means equal to the supply voltage. This is the condition when you have what? Cut off, cut off state. And uh, this region when, we can see this region where the current now is, we have the, from above 0 0.7 or 0 0.6, this is the active region. But when it reaches the, when the current increases, when the input increases, reach a point where the output starts now decreasing to the zero. So this is the region where you have saturation. So you can see this voltage, the output voltage is approaching zero, but it will never be equal to zero. It's getting small values which is approaching to zero. So I think we have seen now how do we solve different questions involving uh, saturation and the cut of states. Now from there you can use a transistor as a switch. We have taken an example of one where you can use a transistor as a, uh, as a switch in the automatic light, but can be used in the other, if you remember, we discussed about the multi-vibrators. 
So this can be applied in multiple batteries. We're going to have we're going to have two transistors connected, such like that the output of one transistor is 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 acting as the input of the other transistor. This is what we call we form a multiple batter. We form a, a, a switching system. Switching system. So this is through the capacitor, through the resistor. And remember, we have different types of uh, multiple batteries. We did in the class. You remember this? You mentioned some areas where we can use that. When you have two transistors, whose uh, saturation point differ slightly difference. We can have one transistor connected such that the output. So the the output of one transistor will be feeding to the input of another transistor. This is what we form a uh, multiple batteries. And we mentioned types. We have mono, 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 and we have uh, bi, and we have stable. Multivibrators. So these are different types of uh, the multivibrators, which shows how a transistor can be used as a switch in various ways. Now, okay, to finish up our discussion, let's see now the assignment that we have. We have the assignment that we are supposed to do to check whether you have understood this part of the lesson. So the question says, you are given a transistor which is in the NPN transistor, the way it is connected it has the supply voltage of 8 and the voltage across the, the resi resistance is 0.8 and the, the amplification factor of a transistor is given the input resistance is given you are required to draw the circuit diagram to represent this information then you are required to determine the collector base current and the collector emitter voltage and B, uh, we talk of VCE finally we are supposed to find the power and the uh, voltage gain. Okay, this is the part of uh, our last part of discussion. So I think you can do that. Step number one, you're supposed to draw the circuit diagram and uh, maybe to show as in the starting point, you draw the circuit in the common, common emitter. This is the common emitter arrangement. This was the supply voltage which is given here this is, this terminal should be at the ground we have this is the input very simple you have the this is the end pin transistor this is our collector this is our base this is our emitter this is our base current this is our collector current I see which flows there and this is our emitter current this is our VCC. So everything is there. That's step number one. You should know how to draw this, this diagram. And from there, you're supposed to, to find all the information required. Because this input resistance is given, and this resistance is given. I think I've enjoyed so, okay, for this part of electronics. And we have seen that the, the electronics play part in your life. Stay tuned for more programs coming on this part of programs. Stay at home and be safe. Nchi yetu tangu tumepata uhuru ilikuwa na hospitali za wilaya 77 tu. Hivi sasa tunajenga 67. Tukienda kwa mwendo huu nina uhakika katika muda mfupi uliobaki itakuwa kila wilaya na wilaya zingine zinaweza zikawa na hospitali mbili mbili za wilaya. Tumeongeza bajeti ya dawa na vifaa tiba kutoka shilingi bilioni 31 hadi shilingi bilioni 270 mwaka huu. Aidha tumeajiri watumishi wa afya wapatao 11152152 na pia tumejenga nyumba za watumishi takribani 306. Tumeanza safari ya maendeleo katika Tunachekeleza elsumbizi na ishirini Mimi nilikuwa na umwa korona Ujumbe wangu kwa Tanzania Ondoa hofu, nikinge Nikinge jamii yako, korona inazumilika Korona kweli ipo Lakini isetuyumbisha katika msimamu wetu na direction yetu Lakini pia kuendele kumomba mungu wetu